Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In the previous video, we talked about the detailed structure of the sporophyte of fern and we also saw the structure that is the sporangium in which the spores are produced. Now in this part, we'll talk about the gametophyte which is formed by the germination of the spores. So if you remember, in the sporangium, there was a diploid spore mother cell. And these spore mother cells, they undergo meiosis to produce haploid spores. So these are the spores which are produced by meiotic division. These spores are going to germinate. So now when the spore germinates, initially we find that there is a tiny structure, the spore has germinated and some thallus-like structure is formed. And very soon, this thallus-like structure, it takes the heart shape. Now it is not exactly the heart shape, but this is how the shape is. There is a notch or a depression here and it looks like this. So we call this shape as heart shape. This depression is known as apical notch. And the reason why I have drawn it in green is it is green and it is photosynthetic. Photosynthetic. This is called the prothallus. And this prothallus is green and it has or it performs photosynthesis. The structure that we are drawing is from the lower side. When the spore germinates, it develops into this structure. This is inconspicuous, not very prominent, a tiny structure which lies flat on the ground. And this side which we are drawing is the lower side or the ventral side. So this prothallus is from the ventral side because most of the structures which are there, they are on the ventral side. Now on the ventral side towards this pointed end we find unicellular rhizoids and these rhizoids are only on this lower side. So these structures are rhizoids and these rhizoids are unicellular. The function is absorption of water. Now between these rhizoids, we find that there are the male sex organs, which are called the antheridia. So these antheridia are in between these rhizoids and they are towards the tapering end of prothallus. They are called antheridia. These are the male sex organs. And towards the apical notch are present the archegonia. So these are the female sex organs which are called archegonia. We will discuss the detailed structure now. Now if we draw these two structures, that means if we talk about this antheridium. So one antheridium is made up of four cells. Now as I said, that this prothallus is going to lie flat on the surface and on the lower side or the ventral side we would find these sex organs. That means the sex organ is on the lower side. So if it has an opening, the opening is going to be like this. So if I make this as the part of prothallus, this is the top and we would be drawing the structure which is like this. So we will see the structure going downwards which is the real position. Now this antheridium has four cells. There is one basal cell which is sort of cup shaped cell. That means this single cell is like this. So it makes the base as well as the little wall. Then there are two cells which are called the ring cells. There are two cells which would be like this. So one cell will make one half, the other cell will make the other half. And there is one cell which is going to make the lid. So there is one cell which is the lid cell or the cap cell. So this is known as 
the basal cell, this one and this one. They are called the ring cells and this is the ring, sorry, this is the lid cell. So each antheridium is made up of only four cells and here there are male gametes which are termed as the sperms are produced. Each male gamete is little long. So this is how the male gamete is. It is, it is slightly coiled like this and in this coiled part it has reserved food material. So there is a vesicle which contains reserved food material and there are cilia which are present. So there are tufts of cilia which are present at couple of places. So this is the sperm or the male gamete. And these structures, they are produced here inside. So let us draw these male gametes. So on the underside, in between the rhizoids, there would be these antheridia. So now you are able to imagine that if this is the prothallus, the antheridium is going to be like this. When the lid opens, the sperms would come out and they would swim. So we said that the pteridophytes or fern, it grows in moist soil so that the sperms get a thin layer of water so that they can swim up to the archegonium. Now let us talk about this archegonium. So if we draw this archegonium, again, it is on the ventral side. So what we will see is this prothallus part and the archegonium is going to have a very very short base because base or that stalk like structure is required then you have to put something upright or above the surface. So the stalk or the base is pretty much uh, absent and then there is this venter. Venter leads into a neck. So this swollen part is the venter and this is the neck. If you are able to recall the same structure which we made in bryophytes, we were specifically writing about the cells. Here also, the venter has many cells. Or let me make it with the same color so that we will be able to differentiate. These are the cells. And the cells which make the neck, they are called the neck cells. And the neck cells are like vertical cells, vertical rows of cells. So there are four such rows which, which would make the neck. That means there is going to be an opening here through which the male gamete is going to go through. So the wall of the neck is going to make, is made up of four rows of vertical cells. Now, the egg is in the center. This is the large egg and all other area is filled with cells. So this large egg, which is the female gamete, now when the male gamete or the sperm has to reach here, water is required plus it is going to be chemical which is secreted from the archegonia so that the male gamete can be attracted here. And this would have malic acid and sugar. Now, when the sperm reaches here, inside there are some cells and these cells are known as the canal cells. In case of bryophytes, we wrote that there are six canal cells. Here there are four canal cells. And as soon as the sperm reaches here, because of the chemicals which are released, that means they are attracted by these chemicals and these canal cells now they will start to uh, dissociate and produce mucilage. So this mucilage is going to lubricate the path of the male gamete. So now when male gamete reaches here and fertilizes the egg. So now when the egg gets fertilized, this egg changes into the zygote and zygote is still inside this venter which is still attached to this prothallus and this structure which is formed here is the zygote and this zygote because it is formed as a result of fertilization is a diploid structure. This zygote is going to now give rise to the sporophyte. 
So the sporophyte produced spores and these spores on germination gave rise to the gametophyte which we call the prothallus. So this prothallus is actually the gametophyte and this is haploid because the spores are haploid and this structure is formed only by mitotic division. So prothallus is haploid, the sex organs are haploid, the gametes which are produced are haploid that means all the divisions which are taking place here are mitotic division. Now the zygote which is formed as a result of fertilization it is going to divide again by mitosis to produce a diploid sporophyte. Sporophyte will again have those sporophylls. Under the sporophylls would be sporangia. In the sporangia would be the spore mother cell and this cycle is going to continue. That means there are gametophyte and sporophyte generation. Predominant stage is the sporophyte which we normally see. Gametophyte is a short lived stage and it is inconspicuous unless or until we actually go clearly observe it we might not even notice this structure. So after the sexual reproduction is done after zygote is formed the prothallus is going to degenerate. So that green structure which is there that is going to degenerate and the zygote will grow into the sporophyte and the predominant stage is sporophyte also the gametophyte is not dependent on sporophyte and the sporophyte is also not dependent on gametophyte. So these two stages are independent. This is different from what we talked about in bryophytes. In bryophyte, the sporophyte was completely dependent on the gametophyte. Here, both these stages, that is the sporophyte as well as the gametophyte stages are independent of each other. And the life cycle is completed. That means gametophyte gives rise to sporophyte, sporophyte gives rise to gametophyte. And the form that we are talking about, it is mostly used for its ornamental uh, purpose. That is the leaves which are nice long and with pinnate compound. So this is the ornamental uh, plant which we normally grow in our gardens. So this is one important example of Terrorophyte. Now in the next uh, video we will talk about another.